everyone, it's Janie here. Just to let you know that the next part, which I think is part five of the videos for the Sunshine and Showers Crochet Along, are live now. I'm introducing you to them here. Um, Emma has done a video for this part, which is the part that for me represented September in the Sunshine and Showers Crochet Along. Um, I kind of felt it was like the design that I had here, I felt kind of represented um, flowers on a trellis in the garden. And this is the central part of the blanket. If you remember last time you made the flowers, well, you will remember on the edges that represented August, um, you're actually going to start a new piece now that, well, two new pieces that become the central panel of the blanket. So Emma's going to talk you through that in the forthcoming video and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to part five of Sunshine and Showers. Um, what I've got here is a completed strip um, which shows everything we're going to be doing for part five. As you know, we work in pairs, so I'm going to be talking you through um, making one of these strips. And as you'll see from, or as you will have seen from Jane's in, uh, introduction, those strips are going to be joined together. We're going to be working outwards again um, on our blankets. We've done the edgings now. So we're sort of starting at the centre and working outwards. And this is a great piece to sort of revisit some of the um, earlier techniques. If you're sort of new to crochet, this is a great piece to just get back to those basics again, looking at foundation, looking at working into your foundation row, um, that kind of thing. We've got some nice, simple rows of doubles and trebles. And then we move on to this trellis part, as Jane uh, mentioned, sort of, it reminds her of, of her flowers growing up the trellis. This is a great, um, a great way to look at some of the techniques that she actually uses in some of her more complicated or more complex designs because it's sort of working behind stitches and putting stitches into previous rows and things like that. So don't worry about that now, we'll work through it completely together, but an excellent sort of um, practice piece this. I'm really, uh, really enjoyed making this. So we'll get on and make it together. Right, we're going to start with a foundation chain or a chain to start with um, and I'm on my four and a half a millimeter hook and I'm working here with um, duck egg blue um, so just a reminder I'm sure you're already aware but we're going to start with the slip knot on the hook and we're just going to go ahead and make that real long really long um, 172 chain chain <laughs> Um, so, as you know, I'm working a smaller piece, so I will be working fewer chains than that. But I'm keeping it loose. Don't forget, don't make your foundation chains too tight because you've got to work into them and you don't want them sort of pulling into um, a banana shape. So keep them a little looser than, um, you know, perhaps you'd normally crochet and make your way along. You can always put stitch markers or safety pins every 20 or 50 chains if that helps you keep a count um, much easier to count in blocks of say 20 or 50 than it is to keep going back and counting from 100 so i'll just get to the end of my smaller chain and we'll look at working back along it okay last two right so there's my foundation chain you should have 172 chains in your um foundation do check and double check because it's um, much easier to add or take away stitches at this stage rather than getting to the very end and realizing you're a couple short right so we're now going to for our foundation row what we're going to do is work back along that chain and put a double crochet into each of the chains we've made so a little reminder of how that works we're going to start off by missing the first chain from the hook you never count the loop that's on the hook that's a starter you miss the first chain, so the one that's kind of the loop is coming out of, and we're going to put our hook in the next one along. And I'm just going to go through that loop, sorry, through that chain, pull up a loop, and finish the double crochet. And that is one double crochet. And I'm going to work along going into each chain, making sure I'm not missing a chain. Good idea to do this one in good light, I think. Um, because sometimes it can be a bit tricky to see if you've worked into a chain or not. And again, there is nothing worse than getting across the full width of a blanket with three or four stitches left and realising 
your numbers aren't quite right because you can guarantee the mistake is always in the first few stitches and you end up having to go all the way back. So keep an eye, make sure you're not missing any chains and just work all the way along. Okay, just coming up to the last few stitches now. And the very last one, it's always a little tricky because that's where you started with the uh, slip knot and it can be a little tricky to get your hook in. So this is this one here. Right, I'm going to pull my yarn through and just tighten that slip knot a little bit to make it less visible. But I'm not going to complete the stitch. I'll just show you what we've got. This will be very twisty at the moment. Don't worry, it will straighten out. But if you look, you can see I've gone all the way along my foundation with my double crochet stitches. I'm on the very last one. And rather than complete the stitch, I'm going to change the colour. And if you remember, what that means is letting go of, um, in this case, duck egg blue. And I'm going to bring in storm blue. And I'm going to finish the stitch with storm blue. So I'm going to pull through on that last stitch with storm blue. And I can now cut duck egg because that is not needed anymore. So I've snipped that. You can't see, but I have. <laughs> I'll show you. There you go. And we're ready now to continue with storm blue. And we're going to work now on row one. So row one is a nice and simple row. It's going to be a row of treble stitches. So I'm going to turn my work. And before I continue, I can see because those stitches are larger than the double crochet we've been working on, we're just going to double check that we don't need to change hook. And we actually do, because as I said, they're larger stitches. So we'll make our hook a little smaller to compensate. And so I'm going to work with a four millimeter hook. Do just double check at the beginning of every row, as we have been doing, um, whether you are advised or not to change hook size. Okay, so the work is turned. I'm gonna do three chain, one, two, and three. And that is going to count as my first treble crochet. Obviously we are working UK terminology here. Right, so I'm not going to put a treble in the base stitch of that chain. I'm going to miss that because this, these three chain that I've just made are going to count as my first stitch. So I don't want to put another one in there or I'd gain a stitch. So um, I'm going to miss that, come along and make a treble stitch in that next stitch. And then all the way along, lovely, simple, relaxing row of trebles all the way along your 171 stitches all the way so I'm in the last few stitches now and again at the end of this row which is row one we're going to be switching from storm and we're going to be storm as in the color storm and we're going to be switching to lime so if you look what happened there let me take that back I'm on my last stitch I'm going to go yarn around the hook hook through the stitch, pull up a loop. So I've got three loops on the hook, yarn over and through two. And I'm not going to complete that stitch. I'm going to stop there and make the final stage of the stitch with lime and just pull that through. And again, because I've done that, I can now cut storm. And um, I am now ready to work on row um two using lime right so row two ready for that i'm going to turn the work i've got lime on the hook and i'm just going to check and yes i do need to change my hook size again so i'm going back up to an, a four and a half millimeter hook because we are working a row of double crochet now let's just pay attention to the difference in what happens at the beginning of this row compared to what happened at the beginning of our treble row. So I'll start with one chain, but that is not going to count as a stitch, which means I do this time need to put um, a stitch into that very first um, stitch at the base of the chains because else I will be down a stitch. So with the double crochet, I'm going to be putting a stitch right at the very beginning with the treble. I miss it. All right, and it is very simple row of 
double crochet all the way across in lime. Okay, all the way along to the end. And on the last pull through again, we're going to be changing the yarn colour this time to khaki. Right. So I've already cut that. So this is obviously a second take, isn't it? <laughs> so this time we'll go back through to khaki in exactly the same way. And I'm going to carry on because I'm going to turn the work and on row three, it's exactly the same again, another row of double crochet using the four and a half millimeter hook. So do you remember at the beginning, we do our one chain and we put our first stitch right into the stitch at the base of that chain. And then all the way back we go with khaki. And what I'm doing at the end of each row, unbelievably for me, is actually sewing all my ends in so that it's clear for you to see um, sort of what's happening. So if you possibly can, do sew your ends in at the end of each row. You can obviously crochet over some of them if that's what you want to do, um, but sew them in so you don't have an awful lot of work to do at the end um, of each row. Okay, here we go, coming up to the end. And again, changing the yarn shade at the end on the last pull through. And for row four, we are going to meadow, which is a slightly lighter green. So I'm gonna pull through on the last pull through and turn that to meadow and I will cut khaki okay so a couple of um nice straightforward rows here um right row four this is when things start to get a little more interesting so we're going to turn the work and we're also going to change our hook again to um, the smaller four millimeter hook now let's just have a look I don't know if we can see on if you look if you focus on meadow color here you can just sort of see these are the trellisy the green climbing the trellis or the trellis itself or whatever but you can see there's sort of nice arches of um, meadow and that's what we're going to make now so let me show you how that works Right, so we are, um, this is going to be our right side, what we're, what we're looking at now. We're right side facing, we're on our four millimetre hook and we're ready to work with meadow. And once you sort of tighten everything up and sew everything in, it gets a lot, a lot more secure. So don't worry too much at the beginning. Right, we're going to work one chain, that's just our turning chain. And we're going to work one double crochet at the base of that chain. Okay, so as we've done with our last two rows, one double crochet at the base of that chain. And that's our anchor point that's holding things nice and securely. And we're ready to start making those arches. Um, they're going to just be made with chains and we're going to alternate five chains, three chains, five chains, three chains. You'll see what I mean and I'll talk you through it slowly. So we'll start with five chain. One, two, three, four and five and to create that nice little arch we're going to sort of secure it back into our work and you see it creates that nice little arch so we're going to miss three stitches one two and three and we're going to make a double crochet in the fourth one all right and if you look at that there you go pretty little arch so that's number one so that was a five chain we're now going to do a three chain one two three to make a smaller more compact arch because that one is going to be attached in the very next uh, double crochet along all right so i've done three chain and i'm just going to put another double crochet in the next stitch along the next khaki stitch along so you can see i've got one larger and one smaller get those out of the way one larger and one smaller arch and i'm going to do that all the way along so five And miss three, one, two, three, and secure. Whoops, I'm secure in there. Sorry, I was reading at the same time. And three, one, two, and three. And this time, secure next 
or in the stitch next to the one we've just come out of. So five and three all the way along. That's easy to remember, isn't it? Five and three. When you've done the larger four and five, when you've done the larger chain, you miss three stitches, so you get that nice gentle arc. And when you've done the smaller chain, you don't miss any stitches at all to get that sort of smaller, more compact arc. And you're going to do that all the way along. And there's just one slight difference when we get to the end. So I'll get to the end and I'll show you. OK. One, two and three. And I'm now coming up to my last five chain. One, two, three, four and Five. And if I miss three stitches, one, two, three, you can see I've got two stitches left, not one, two stitches left. What we're going to do here is we're going to double crochet those two stitches together to create just one stitch at the end. Um, so a little reminder how we do that. So I'm still missing the three, one, two and three. My hook is going to go into the fourth stitch along and I'm going to pull up a loop, but I'm not going to finish the stitch because I'm double crocheting two together. I'm going to go into the next stitch, which is the last stitch, pull up another loop, and I've now got three loops on my hook, and I'm going to take my yarn over and through all three. Okay, so that is double crochet two together, and that has created one stitch from two. Okay, and you can see my um, little arches all the way along. They're a little bit flat at the moment, but don't worry because they won't be um, when we put our next row on. So a little bit of a change this time. We're going to leave that loop and we're going to put a stitch marker into that loop. Just hold that in a stitch marker or um, safety pin. You can even loosely um, kind of take the end through if you want to. We just need to be able to kind of take that out. So however is easiest for you to do it, you've got your little stitch marker um, holding that loop ready. Okay, so that was row um, four. We're ready now for row five. Okay, row five. I'm just bringing in our sample again to show you. Row five, we're gonna work the um, grape color that you can see coming through there. I'm looking at the right side of the work at the moment and you'll see um, that the grape is sort of passing behind the meadow coloured arches that we've just made it's worked behind if i turn it over you can see um, what's happening but it's sitting at the back of the work so this is where sort of working into or working behind stitches um, is starting to happen and as i said this will stand you in good stead for some of jane's more um elaborate designs because there's a lot of a lot of that goes on there with those lovely 3d flowers in um frida's flowers and um and uh, designs such as that OK, so let's have a look at how that is worked. OK, I'm ready to go with the grape yarn and four millimetre hook for this one. And what I'm going to do is I still not I've not turned the work. I'm still so you can see the, the um, last stitch I made is over here on the left. But I'm coming back along to the right to the very start of um, the row that we just sort of started. I'm going to attach grape, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work behind this loop. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to just do nothing and join my yarn into the car key, which is what we're going to do, I would be pulling it through and underneath. Can you see it's kind of coming under the arch and anything I work is going to come up here. That's not what I want to do. I want to basically fold that little meadow down because I want to work into this khaki row and I want to work it behind so my hook um, is essentially behind if I place it like this this is essentially where we were working the hook is working can you sort of see if I sort of exaggerate that it's working behind the meadow loop that we've just made the easiest way to do that is just to, to fold that down right and I'm going to be joining uh, the grape yarn into the third stitch that's been made in the car key. All right, so number one is this edge where we've already got a meadow stitch in. That's number one stitch. We're not doing anything there. Number two is the next one along. Number three is the one after that. All right, so it's the middle of those three little stitches that are sitting under that arch. So I'll fold that down. I'll put my hook through and I'll pull up a loop. So we, we're sort of used to joining in this way it's just we're actually working behind a stitch now or behind a row and I will secure that with one chain 
All right, so that is grape yarn joined in, secured. I'm going to make a double crochet in the same place. So just where um, I've secured the yarn, I'm going back in and I'm making a double crochet. And that's our first stitch proper in there, all right? Now then, we're making very sort of similar arch shapes um, and it will join everything together very, very cleverly and it's not anywhere near as complicated as it looks. That's the hardest part that we've just done. Um, and it's a nice and simple repeat. So let me show you what's happening. So we've started with one chain. We will move into doing two, sorry, I beg your pardon. We started with one double, double crochet. We will move into making two chain. And we're now going to work into the smaller of the arches that we made on the um, meadow row, on the last row. So that little arch we made, we're going to put three double crochet in there. So I'm coming from the front straight under that little arch. And that's where my three double crochet are going to be. One, two, and three. Okay, and that sort of integrated that nicely because what I'm now going to do is dive back behind and secure that down. So two more chain, one and two. And just as we did when we initially joined in the grape yarn, I'm going to fold down that little arch and I'm going to put my next double crochet in the middle of the three. All right, so there's three stitches that sit under those arches. We missed them, do you remember? and we missed the three stitches, my grape is going to go into the middle of those three missed stitches and I'll secure with a double crochet. All right, so we've got double crochet, two chain, three double crochet, two chain, one double crochet. Off we go, so two chain, three into the little arch, or oh, sorry, three double crochet into the little arch, two, three, two chain, and anchor it back down in the center of those khaki stitches, remembering to pull the meadow uh, arch forward so that you can work behind. All right, I'll do it one more time. So two chain, three double crochet into the little arch. And two chain, and we anchor it in the middle of those stitches. And I'm gonna just stop and create with a double crochet. I'm just gonna stop, take that out, and you can see the effect that that has. Now, at the moment, those arches may fold forward a little. Don't worry, because we're gonna take care of that in future rows as well. But can you see how that looks? Like we've got two distinct rows of um, trellis or arches, and it just sits beautifully. It looks like this is a continuous arch. Um, and it is, but it's cleverly integrated, picking up those smaller arches that we made in the meadow. It's really, really pretty, isn't it? So you're going to work that all the way along. Um, and you are going to work that, I don't know if we get numbers on that, no, no. 32 times, you're going to work that 32 times. And I will just show you what happens when you get to the end. Okay, coming up to my last little arch. So putting the last three double crochet in there. And then the two chain and finally I'm going to put the last double crochet just as I have been doing in the middle of those three skipped stitches from that car uh, from the row before the, the middle of those khaki stitches okay I've made that one double crochet and I'm going to fasten that off we are now done with the grape Okay, so let's just have a little look. You can see that's working all the way along those lovely uh, meadow and grape arches. Isn't that brilliant? I really like that. So that was row five. Right, we're going to start row six. We're going to be working with um, cream yarn for three rows now. So um, not too many changes for the next couple of rows. I'm going to take the stitch marker out or the um, little safety pin, take the stitch marker out from 
that last meadow stitch that we made. Do you remember we made the double crochet two together at the end of the meadow row? And I'm just gonna pull that loop. So we are back to the very last stage of that double crochet two together. And I'm gonna put my four millimeter hook through here so you can see I've got three loops on the hook and we're going to be staying with our four millimeter hook for these next rows or next couple of rows so um, that is handy i'm going to change yarn color to cream on that final pull through so if you see what i mean we did a final pull through just to secure it um, and now we've just come back and taken it back one stage so that we can do our normal color change okay to cream so that was all that was about that little um stitch marker um, so I'm going to turn my work and this next row, this first cream row is nice and simple. Um, we're just going to do five chain, one, two, three, four, oh dear, am I off the top there, four and five. And now we're going to make um, one double crochet into the top of the five chain loop made in meadow okay so i've just moved everything out of the way so you can see the large do you remember the larger of the two arches we made i'm just going to put one double crochet in there all right and that's going to create sort of a little corner in cream and five again one two three four and five and we're going to miss all of this malarkey just completely forget it and put a double crochet into the next five chain loop or arch from meadow that's all we're going to do all the way along these five chains and one double crochet all the way right, that's the last five chain and i'm going to put one double crochet in that final five chain meadow group there and we've got a slight change on this last repeat um we're going to just do two chain one and two and then we're going to pop a treble into the top of that beginning double crochet and that will create that corner edge which sort of will match what we've done at the beginning okay so if i show you that you've got that squared off corner edge here which matches the squared off corner edge down here, which we've just made with chains. Okay, so that was row six. We're gonna turn, staying with the cream and staying with the four millimeter hook. We'll make our one chain, which is our turning chain. And that's not gonna count as a stitch. Now, because I've got cream yarn here in a sort of a white background, I'll bring it a little closer so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm gonna make a double crochet into that first stitch, which, which sits at the base of the chain. You'll be able to see that easier um, on your work, but it's sort of sitting, you can see, can't you? It's kind of gone into the top of that treble, All right? So three chain, this is where it gets very exciting indeed. <laughs> I'm going to start working into the grape stitches. All right. So I'm just pulling them up. If you remember, we put three double crochet into each of these arches. So when you see these little clusters of grape stitches, there's three of them sitting there. We're not going to do anything into the first stitch and we're going to put double crochet into each of the second stitch. And we're going to work those double crochets around this chain as well. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll take my hook miss the first grape stitch i'm going to go into the second my hook is going through the uh, stitch and i'm not coming up over the top of the cream chain i'm going right underneath it so grape yarn is sitting over the top of my hook and cream chain is sitting over the top of my hook now when i finish that double crochet it has the effect of pulling those two rows together can you see that it's sort of pulling um the grape and the cream together and i'm doing that twice i'm coming into the next grape stitch along doing exactly the same so hook goes through the grape stitch so you can see the two um two strands of grape yarn sitting over the top of the hook and the grape sorry and the cream chain sitting over the top of the hook 
bring my yarn through and finish my stitch and it's pulling all the work together okay so three chain one two and three miss everything else that's going on until I get to those little clusters of grape stitches miss the first one then double crochet into the next two not forgetting to go under the cream chain okay so that's all you're going to do all the way along three chain two double crochet making sure to work under the cream chain at the same time and thus pull everything together all the way along right i'm on the last little cluster of grape stitches so let me just tell you or show you what happens when you get to that point so putting the two double crochets in as usual and then i'm going to do another three chain as usual at this time i'm going to finish with a double crochet in the third chain um, of that starting chain when we started with the cream okay we made three chain instead of a treble so i'm going to put a double crochet into the third chain there which again just maintains that squared off edge just take that out and show you um, and you can just sort of see let go let go you could just sort of see like i said that squared off edge at that end now if we look back at what we've done we've just started to pull everything together and just give those um archers those uh, meadow and grape archers a little bit of structure so i think that looks really really lovely right we're staying with cream but we are switching to a four and a half millimeter hook for row eight so i'll turn my work i've got my four and a half millimeter hook there now and i'm going to make one chain which doesn't count as a stitch put one double crochet into the stitch at the base of that chain okay three double crochet into the next chain space this is a nice row this is just adding more structure by going across and putting lots of double crochet into this three in that chain space then i'll put one in each of the double crochet stitches we made um, going back this way so we made them into the top of the grape stitches if you remember and then three into the chain space one each in the top of the double crochets that's all you're going to do all the way along just basically sort of fill in make that cream row nice and secure with double crochets all the way across so three in the gaps and one each in the top of the double crochets we've made on the row before nice and simple okay i'm in the last chain space so i'm putting my three double crochet in to that last chain space and my last two double crochet i've got to go into one stitch at the end i need to put two in there to make my numbers up all right so go one into that last double crochet and then go in again for the second stitch however don't pull through because we are going to change to duck egg on that last pull through all right change into duck egg on the last pull through so i can now cut if i can find my scissors i can now cut cream we're done with cream and we are on the home straight we are now going to finish our piece with just two nice rows of double crochet one in duck egg and one in storm so a little reminder we make one chain to turn okay and we're going to go into the stitch at the base of the chain to make our first double crochet we must do that or we'll lose that stitch again and then all the way along nice easy relaxing double crochet this is a great um part five for relaxing work actually really great because you've got lots of nice double crochet and trebles just you know just a, a soothing piece of work this one all right we're just at the very last stitch on row nine 
and we're now coming into the last color change for this part and we're going to finally change back to storm blue pull through cut that yarn cut duck egg and we'll turn our work i know i've got some ends to neaten up but we're nearly there one turning chain doesn't count as a stitch, so my stitch goes into the stitch that's sitting at the base of that chain. And this will be my last row for part five. And again, it is just a very nice, very straightforward storm blue double crochet row. And I'm still on my four and a half millimeter hook, smaller stitches, bigger hook, remember? And I'm gonna work them all the way along. And when I get to the end, I can tuck everything in, or rather sew everything in, sew all the ends in. Um, and I'm gonna put that last stitch onto a stitch marker, just as we did with the meadow um with the meadow stitch so there you go that is what your part five will look like so we worked through a double crochet row a treble crochet row a couple more double crochets and we did that lovely trellis work through the middle gave it some structure with the cream rows and finished again with a nice couple of very straightforward very relaxing rows of double crochet so that is part five.